With this video, I'm going to talk again about uh, for loops, and we're just going to do some kind of real basic stuff here with for loops and using cells and kind of talking to the spreadsheet. So right off the bat, I've just declared a couple of variables that I can use in my program. This is sort of a quick and dirty program, if you will. And then I, I've got a couple of cells statements here. Now you have to understand that whenever I say cells, row, comma, column, you can think of that as a memory location. I can store stuff there. So in this particular case, you'll notice that the cells row, comma, column is on the left-hand side. So this is just like regular assignment to a variable. So in this case, I'm putting the word hey into that memory location. The next line down does the same thing, but obviously notice that it's changed the column address. The row address is the same. So this should be the second next column over from the one where the hey is. So it should say, hey, you, on the screen if you look at that. that. That makes a certain amount of sense. So you have to really start thinking in your mind. You have to start building a model in your mind about what's going on here when assignment takes place. You have to think about it. And if, you, if you're having trouble with that, I suggest you draw a picture on a piece of paper and you think about what's going on. Now this next for loop that you see here, it's a pretty typical for loop. We've talked lots about for loops. You notice in this particular for loop that I'm not using variables for the start value and the end value. I just have one in there for the start value and 10 in there for the end value. So it's pretty clear what's going to happen with this for loop. It's going to start out with the value row, the variable row, having the value 1. And then it's going to come around and it's going to say next row and then row is going to go to 2. And then it's going to come around to the next row and row is going to go to 3. And it does this all the way up to 10. Now, inside the body of this for loop, then, any statements that are executed inside the body of this for loop can use the row variable, of course, because it's just a variable. You can use that variable anytime you wish. So in this particular case, we're going to use the variable in two different situations. On the right-hand side, of course, the variable is simply going to represent the current value of that variable. So again, anytime you see a variable on the right-hand side of an assignment, it's going to be the value of that variable. So in this case, of course, the value is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. Well, on the left-hand side, we're referring to a particular location on the spreadsheet. So we're using cells. And then row, comma, column, of course, is the address for the particular cell we wish. Well, in the case of the row, we're using our variable. So it's going to refer to row 1, then row 2, then row 3. And it's always referring to column 1. So in column 1, rows 1 through 10, we are putting a bunch of numbers. And so you should think in your mind what this does before you run it. It is extremely important, in fact, for you to think about what your program is going to do before you run it. If you're not thinking about what your program is going to do, and you're not kind of playing computer in your mind before you run it, you're making a huge mistake. This, this is true for everyone who programs. You want to think about what your program is going to do before you run it. You should predict exactly what you think your program is going to do before you run it. Now, I'm starting to sound like a broken record here, but I cannot emphasize this point enough. So if you're not thinking about what your program is going to do step by step by step before you run it, you're just making a huge mistake. And there's a very good chance that you're not going to learn how to program if you don't do what I just said. Let's take a look at this next block of code. This next block of code is using my column variable. And you'll notice how similar my next block of code looks to the prior block. It's still a for, for next loop. There's nothing magic about that. It's got a variable called column instead of row. But it's still starting from 1 and going to 10. Now, the use of my variable names here is completely arbitrary. Variable names can be anything. But you really want to design your variable names so they make sense as to what your program is doing. But it is totally arbitrary. So in this particular case, let's look at the body of this code. I'm, again, I'm using my loop control variable in two different situations. In this first one, I'm using it as the value. In other words, it extracts the value here, and I'm going to use that value in my assignment statement. On the left-hand side, of course, it says that I'm going to go to cells, row, comma, column. Well, row is always 12. It's always 12 because it's just the number 12 there. But column, again, that's the variable name. So it's going to retrieve the value that's stored in that variable name and then use it to determine the address or the location of the particular cell where we're storing this 
value that we have on the right hand side of our assignment. So in this case it's going to pull off the 1, so it's going to be row 12, column 1, then the loop's going to go around and it's going to pull off a 2 out of column, so it'll be row 12, column 2, and it will store the values as it goes across. Again, you should think about what this program is going to do. In fact, I'm not even going to run this program so you can see what it does. I want you to think about it. You can key it in yourself and run it. Now, I want to show you one other thing I could have done, of course. I could have done all this with a single variable. I could have just done it with a variable called x. So I could have said x in this situation, x in this situation, x in this situation. Also, I would just reuse that variable x in these three places. So in this situation, Oops, I've got to fix these two next statements also. In this situation, I'm just using one variable, x, and it says for x equals 1 to 12, so it's still going to go from 1, I mean from 1 to 10, I'm sorry. It's still going to go from 1 to 10, and here it's still going to pull the value out of that variable location, and here it's still going to use the value of that variable to determine which row on the sheet. And then I reuse it here, and it's still going to use x, and here it is, it's going to pull the value of x out of memory, and x is going from 1 to 10 again, just like it says here. In this case, of course, instead of using the value of x to determine the row like I did before, I'm going to use the value of x to determine the column. So it's going to say on row 12, we're going to do column 1, and then row 12, we're going to do column 2. So again, it's simply how I'm using the variable. And of course, I had to understand how cells works. How does this cells work when it's on the left-hand side of an assignment? It's working like it's a variable, and that value is going to be stored into that memory location. So you should key this code in, convince yourself you know exactly what it's going to do before you run it. In fact, one thing you could do is you could key in the code and only key in up to this portion. Just do the first for loop and then convince yourself of what it's going to do and then run it and see if you're right. And if you're not right, you should think hard about what you were thinking that was wrong. And then after you get this one kind of figured out in your mind, go ahead and key this one in and think about what you think it's going to do before you run it. And again, you can always step through your code if you wish to kind of watch it behave. You go to the debug menu and choose the F8 option or just choose the item from the menu if your F8 key's not working. Okay, give that a shot.